Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadger.com, out here today to bring you my loadout from a recent level one introduction to night vision course by the training company, Koi Valdar. This being a continuation of my night vision series, I basically scaled up capability as well as usually cost, because capability and cost often come kind of hand in hand. But for this class by Koi Valdar, which I may or may not be pronouncing right, basically, if you're a Star Wars nerd, you can definitely appreciate it. It's in reference to the 100 hand-selected Mandalorians that went to train all the clone troopers. But during that class, here's all the stuff I used. And I guess 30,000 foot view, pretty much transported everything in this. This is the Prometheus Design Works CC12, I believe it is. Basically, a super ruggedized bag that will hold, I believe it's a 12 gallon insert. So. Everything can get thrown in here and it worked great because in part the weather was not that great. Kept everything dry as well as organized. So where to start? I guess we'll go ahead and start with the belt I was using. During the course, I was using this battle belt by Arbor Arms. Similar to kind of a lot of belts, there's a inner belt that goes actually on your pants with female Velcro on the outside and then the outer belt system, this one being their unpadded version with male Velcro. So it basically attaches, holds on really secure. In the front, we have a Cobra buckle, makes it really easy taking it on and off. Coming around this side, some of the Imdom Universal Magazine pouches. I was running a Glock, I'll get more on that later, but basically holding those mags. And then their Universal Rifle pouches. I was using these Tango Down Arc mags and had them in there. And then coming around the back, the Responder IFAC by Live the Creed. Really nice, lightweight, low profile, kind of minimalist, but has pretty much what you need there. And then for holster, was running this guy right here, which is made by Black Point Tactical. Really a big fan of their stuff. When it comes to like active retention, I definitely appreciate Safari Land, but the other issue with Safari Land is sometimes it is really, really hard to find what you're looking for. So for this course and the follow on course, basically running different weapon lights on there, it was really awesome to find exactly what I was looking for with Black Point Tactics. As far as kind of PPE, personal protective equipment goes, I was wearing these. My Smith Director Elite prescription ballistic lenses did a good job for me. And then for hearing protection, basically these, just passive hearing protection. These are the Surefire EP4, EP20, I don't remember. They have a bunch of different SKUs, but basically Surefire in-ear hearing protection. And then for part of the class, was running these gloves right here, which are the Overlord Short Gloves by Outdoor Research. They do a pretty good job, like at least in the contact sense. They're not gonna keep your hands very warm, but when you touch cold things, don't immediately freeze, still give you enough dexterity to shoot. Then, as far as on my head, probably not really protective in the sense of what we're doing, and it's not ballistic rated, but basically carrying my night vision, I ended up using this. This is a Protec helmet, pretty much made for night vision, has a shroud on it, also has pieces of pick rail on either side. So if you want, you can attach lights, things along those lines. And on this has the Notros mount, probably, probably pronouncing that wrong, basically allowing you to move your night vision up and then drop it back down. And this is kind of one of their vanilla mounts as far as there's only so much adjustment in this, but it absolutely did work just using the J-arm and then using this PBS-14. This PBS-14 I used got sent out to me by Shooting Surplus. It's in a Viper 14C housing, basically just who makes that PBS-14 housing. But the important part internal wise, this is actually a L3 white phosphorus filmless tube. Definitely a amazing step up with respect to capability from running a Gen 2 Green Foss PBS-14. As far as pistols for the course, ended up using this right here, kind of my tried and true Gen 3 Glock 17 metal duty pistol. And on it, 
I used this right here, which is the Streamline VIR2. Used it actually as my primary aiming system on my high point carving in that last night vision course I took. And this time I used it on my pistol. Pretty neat being able to go from white light over to IR, both with IR flood and laser, both at the same time. And then for shooting passively, ended up running this right here, which is the Hollow Sun 507C, is that right? 507C X2. This is their new one with the ACSS reticle in it. Basically a chevron and then also a really big circle. Pretty neat reticle and I'll end up doing a standalone review on that later. But overall, this pistol did a great job for me. No issues whatsoever with this, any of the equipment, anything like that. As far as ammo I was using, fortunately, because ammo is hard to find, some G9 Bullets training ammo. G9 Bullets, local company here, they honestly are known for making bullets like really good bullets for whether it's self-defense, hunting, military applications, like some real specialty bullets. But I was fortunate enough to have some training ammo loaded up from them. And so I shot that in this pistol during that course. And lastly, as far as long guns, I was running this right here. At the heart of it is the KP-15 by KE Arms, essentially a all-in-one integrated low receiver grip and stock made of polymer. And then on top of it, this Ballistic Advantage upper receiver. 16 inch barrel, adjustable gas block, and inside here also have a Surefire optimized bolt carrier group. And then at the end, didn't want a bunch of flash at night, so it was running this right here. It's the Acadian Armament Lynx suppressor. It's pretty cool. You can actually use it on 22 rimfire or 16 inch barrel 5.56. As far as aiming goes, passive aiming was using this right here, Aimpoint Pro, on a American Defense Manufacturing mount, but I wanted to get it higher so that I could actually see over my laser and things like that. So ended up putting it on this riser block. Pretty handy, brought it right up, perfect field of view, worked out really well. As far as active aiming at night, I was using this, Steiner OTAL. Basically it is IR, infrared, laser only. No visible component, anything like that. Takes a AA battery, no external switch. You need to use a pressure pad. And then if I needed illumination, whether white or infrared, was using this right here, which is the M600 Vampire by Surefire. And then the Surefire pressure pad. And then lastly, this was in a Bobro mount. Made it really easy, it's adjustable mount, so you can move it closer or further away, depending on what you're trying to do. Lastly, True North Concepts Grip Stop, and then was using the Edgar Sherman Design Sling. Overall, pretty sweet little rifle package. Overall, what are my thoughts on basically this whole loadout? Actually did a really good job. Again, with respect to capability, massive increase in capability compared with that first loadout from the night vision series. I mean, like across the board. On the one hand, having moved this Streamlight IR laser illuminator from my primary to my secondary, I now had the ability to shoot actively as far as projecting laser illuminator, things like that, rather than just passively. But using this Hollow Sun also worked really well shooting passively with my pistol. On the rifle side of it, being able to shoot active, like emitting energy, so with a laser and or laser and IR illuminator, that was definitely a capability increase in that I could go back and forth between the two. I will say once you get into doing stuff like that, switches become really important. So having to try and figure out how to activate the IR illuminator and then the laser, there was definitely a learning curve there. But being able to shoot passive with the aim point could also, of course, do that. Or if there wasn't quite enough illumination on the target, being able to illuminate it with the IR illuminator without having to turn the laser on, unlike when I was using the VIR2 from Streamlight on my primary during that last course. So yeah, basically afforded different options. Everything, everything on the rifle 
did awesome, did a great job. As far as ammo, I think I was using IMI or something like that. Horrible accuracy with the ammo, but pretty much all the shooting was within 50 yards. Pretty much a non-issue, everything functioned great. As far as this belt setup, it did a good job. It was just clean, low profile, and just gave me pretty much what I needed for that course, being able to just have those magazines on me. The Black Point Tactical Holsters, or holster, did a really good job, good retention, and yeah, actually fit my gun and my optic and my illuminator, which is huge. And then, man, going back to capability-wise and honestly just comfort on a certain level. This helmet, massive upgrade. This bump helmet, like Protect bump helmet, huge upgrade from that skull crusher I used during that last course. Way more comfortable. Uh, and then we get into the night vision. This L3 filmless Gen 3 tube, it's amazing. Like huge increase over that last Gen 2 Green Foss PBS 14 I was using. Definitely a big increase in respect to just what I could take in as far as see visually with, with or without illumination. And then also that difference kind of between green phosphorus and white phosphorus, being able to refine things arguably better, get more detail out of the image you're looking at. So overall, definitely really pleased with this entire loadout. Did a great job for me in that course. And if you are looking for any of these things, they will be linked. Probably not on YouTube because they don't like gun links, but there'll be a link down below, take you over to my site, and you can actually find links to all this gear over there, and you can go check it out there. And lastly, if you appreciate my content and would like to support it, I would greatly appreciate it. A number of different ways you can do so. Chief among them, probably supporting me directly through Patreon. One, you help me go out and create more content for you, which I'm grateful for. In addition to that, we have a Discord set up, active over there, happy to answer any of your questions over there. And you also usually get to see videos before they usually come out. So that's kind of cool too. And some other little bonus benefits there too. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.